So I want to show us this. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. If you're there, would you say, I got it? I got it. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Can I get somebody to say day one? And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above. And it was so. And God called the vault sky. And there was evening. And there was morning the second day. Can I get somebody to say day two? Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. And God called the dry ground land and gathered the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seeds in it according to the various kinds and it was so the land produced vegetation plants bearing seeds according to their kind and trees bearing fruit with seeds in it according to their kind and God saw it was good sidebar anything that does not have a seed in it has been manipulated by man Okay, everything God designed was made to be fruitful and y'all talk to me, multiply. So whenever culture, whenever relational advice gets in the way of seed multiplying and being fruitful, it is being perverted by man. I just threw that in there for free. All right. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. Somebody say day number three. And God said, let there be light in the vaults of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, there was morning. Y'all talk to me, and this is what? The fourth day. God said... Let the waters teem with living creatures and let the birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created great creatures of the sea and every living thing which the water teems and that moves about in it according to their kind. And every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the waters in the sea and let the birds increase on the earth and there was evening and there was morning the fifth day then God said let the land produce living creatures according to their kind the livestock the creatures that move along the ground and the wild animals each according to its kind and it was so God made the wild animals according to their kind and the livestock according to their kind and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kind and God saw that it was good ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters there's so much to unpack 
just from the creation narrative. If I were to try to unpack every single thing, we'd probably be here the rest of the week, and I'm not sure if you like that much Bible or not. I would just like to bring out a few segments of Scripture for our sermonic journey on tonight. The first thing that I would like to point out to you is the halfway mark of verse 2 in our foundational text where the text says, the darkness, darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Holy Spirit was hovering. The Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Please don't miss this. There was darkness over the surface and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Do y'all know what it means to hover? To hover means the act of remaining above a thing to be suspended in place. So the Spirit of God, it was dark, and the Spirit of God is hovering. The act of being above a thing to be suspended in place. And I have a sneaky suspicion on this Thursday night that I am not the only one in the sacred sanctuary and watching online that you know, that you know, that you know the only reason that you are still in your right mind the only reason that you are still sane in the membrane, the only reason that that bullet hit, didn't hit you, you heard it by you, but it didn't hit you. The only reason that she didn't end up pregnant, the reason that it didn't work out, the reason that that marriage didn't work out and you didn't marry that life wrecker. Y'all not talking to me because growth is when you're able to look back at something and thank God for what didn't work out. Okay, let me keep talking. See, because I believe we can get the whole sanctuary to shout. If I were to say, let's give God a praise for him being the God that makes a way out of no way. Let's give God a praise that he can make a way in the wilderness. Let's give God praise that he made a way. But can you still give God praise when he gets in your way? See, see, see. I think the church has done us a disservice. You shout. Over the fact that he made a way. That's true. But what about when he gets in your way? What about when you were about to get the weed so that you could get high, but somehow God interfered with your plans? What about when you were about to spend the night over his apartment or her apartment, but somehow God got in the way and interfered with your plans? What about the time you were about to go to the club and turn up one time for the one time, but some way and somehow God stepped in and got in your way? What about the time you made up in your mind you're going to watch porn, but some way and somehow something got in the way? And I wonder, is there anybody thankful that God has wrecked your plans before your plans ever wrecked you? Amen. I know we get golf claps. That's great. I know. That's great. But I really, really honestly want us to consider that could it be the reason that you're still here is because God has been watching over you. The Spirit of God, while we were in darkness was watching over you. The act of remaining above a thing suspended in place. This is why somebody under the sound of my voice, you can't even get comfortable in your sin. I know you're trying, but I'm just fully convinced whenever a man meets Jesus for real, for real, not like for fake, for fake, but for real, for real. Whenever a woman really meets Jesus, like for real, for real, you can never sin the same again. It's just not, it don't even feel good anymore. Like the high doesn't even hit anymore. The club scene now is starting to stink. Everybody, I heard this song before. Who is this dude coming up behind me? I'm tired of everybody smelling like weed. You now start to get repulsed by what you used to enjoy. It's because the Holy Spirit has been hovering over you. And the Spirit of God is saying, you've been made for more than this. And you can't even enjoy it. This is why before you're about to go out and have lunch with that unmarried woman and you are a married man and your wife doesn't know about it. Before you could do it, there's this tension on the inside that's saying, I don't know if I should do this. That's just the spirit of God hovering, saying you've been made for more than this. Before you can entertain that text, hey, big head, I'm in town. What you up to? 
Before you can entertain it, there's something on the inside. Y'all looking at me crazy and I know I'm talking to somebody. There's something on the inside that's saying, don't respond to that. I don't have any more time, nor do I have the patience to entertain a life wrecker. If I'm going to enter into a season, I want it to be a season because God is training me, not a season because of what I keep picking. I need wisdom. This is why you felt that tension before you clicked purchase for that vacation. I'm going all the way there. This is cuffing season. That vacation, this is when you go on a vacation with your bay. You know that bay that's really the distraction, but you can't see that they're a distraction due to the sex? Because, you know, sex clouds judgment. And so now you expect commitment because y'all had sex. Oh, this is good. Let me go ahead and put my foot on the gas. Listen, boo-boo. Sex is the honey. It's not the glue. Sex, I'm trying, sis. Sex is the honey that belongs in the hive of covenant. It's not the glue. Sex is a fire, and marriage is the fireplace. You'll get burned if you do it any other way. Amen. Oh, this is hidden in here on tonight. Y'all should hear how quiet it is online. That's okay. We're going to talk about it. You know why I'm going to talk about it? Because I was born for such a time as this to redeem the original kingdom agenda. Now, I can give you lies, and I can give you hype, but my desire is to redeem the original kingdom agenda. What does the gospel say about it? What does the Bible say about it? And that has to be my same view about it. But this is what I've learned as a pastor. It's possible that you and I have been swimming in the waters of lies for so long that we're triggered by the truth. <laughs> Only God can judge me. What you really mean is nobody can correct me. Only God can judge me. That's not Bible. That's Tupac Shakur. <laughs> Somebody say the original kingdom agenda. The spirit of God is hovering over the waters. Just like somebody right now. Before you can make that decision, there's something that's trying to pull you out of the dark. And what else I see in our foundational text in verse 5, it says, and there was evening, and then there was morning the first day. I always thought it was morning, then evening. Did y'all catch that? There was evening, and then morning. What if the creation narrative is a way for God to show us, I'm trying to deal with what you're battling with in the dark. I've called for you to be a child of the light. And you're praying for God to give you exposure. And you're praying for God to open doors. And you're praying for opportunities. And God's saying, I have to deal with your evening before I'll ever let there be a light. Because I don't get joy out of embarrassing you. I know this is hard to believe because I remember like old school church, if somebody was sin, they would get a chair, pull it up front, and you would sit down in it. Like y'all may not remember that. That's crazy, isn't it? I'm like, bro, if we, just, if we were just to somehow be able to project every text message that you sent this week, if we were able to project every comment that's in your DMs, if we were able to just look at all the stuff you looked at, would you be that, be that passionate to throw the first stone? Don't throw a stone that will be thrown at you if you're behind the scenes. Everybody knew. Don't throw a stone that will be thrown at you if you're behind the scenes. Everybody knew. It's evening, and then there's day, the first day. And I believe God is calling for his people to come out of darkness so that we could be children of the light. Can I show y'all what happens when darkness reigns? Let's try this. Let's try to get the sanctuary dark. Let's get lights out. Just lights out. Doors shut. I want it to get dark. I want to show you what it looks like. Just, just dark. You can turn your phone off. You can just look at me. Ain't nobody going to knock if he buck. I just want you to look at this. <laughs> this is how a lot of our schools look. Darkness. This is how a lot of our colleges look. Darkness. This is how a lot of our marriages look. Darkness. And unfortunately, y'all, I have to say this. This is how a lot of our churches look. 
darkness. What happens when we preach sugar-coated messages that all it produces is Christians with cavities versus Christians who are called to be the salt of the earth? What happens when the people who are supposed to be children of God start to conform to be like children of Satan? Darkness reigns. Darkness reigns. Let me just get somebody over here. Just put your light up on your, on your cell phone. It don't matter. Just put your light up and just hold it up. There you go. Just this side. See, y'all rebellious. Not this side. Just this side. Just, just put your light up. Okay? Now, I want y'all to notice this. Every person who has made up their mind to be a child of the light contributes to defeating the darkness. Come on. Give me more lights. Give me more lights. The more you make a decision to represent the king, look at this, your commitment to fast and your commitment to have devotion. Come on, give me more. Your commitment to seek God's face. Look at how just your commitment has made a difference to the darkness. Now let's get this side. Let's get this side. Lift your lights up. Everybody just lift your lights up. Remember when I was doing the discernment series and the power went out? Let's do it just like this. Lift your lights up. So no longer do I want you to say you're not making a difference because look at just what your one light is doing and if you can be a light and if she can be a light and if he can be a light and if she can be a light, we can remove the darkness. Now listen, why y'all put your phones down? I ain't done. Y'all going to get this on the night. Now, this is, what, this is what I want to stop happening. Stop dating him, turn your light out, and cause him to turn your light out. Stop dating him, turn your light out, and turn your light out. Stop conforming to your dues, bro, turn your light out. Stop conforming, turn your light out. He's fine, turn your light out. All of y'all, turn your light out. Now, look, the more you conform, the more darkness can rain. On your job and your school this cuffing season series is designed to show you each relational choice you make affects the power of the light are y'all seeing this maybe the reason you keep falling for counterfeits is because you're dating in darkness talk holy ghost maybe the reason we keep giving in to the pressure is because all your friends are in the dark now God said let there be light Shine the light. I don't know if people online are like, listen, I can't see. I can't see. That's the point. Maybe this is why the psalmist says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I live a life according to the word, I'll stop tripping over Satan's traps. God said, let there be light. And there was light. And I'm trying to get us to see. That the reason darkness could reign is because we're not bold enough to be children of the light. It may cost you some friends. That's okay. It may cost your mom and them not to invite you to Thanksgiving dinner in a few weeks. That's okay. I'd rather suffer for the king than suffer with your acceptance. Because here's the thing. The more I keep trying to please you, I notice people pleasing pleases everybody but me. Y'all ever notice that? I'm making everybody happy except God. Can I get somebody to say, light it up? Light it up. 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 More confidence, light it up. God desires to bring us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And the text that I'm going to park on and spend the rest of my time throughout this sermonic journey on tonight is seven words that changes everything. Seven words that as I was looking at this, seven words that I believe can remove your frustration, seven words that I believe can lower your anxiety, seven words that reveals to us the posture of God as he builds. And I believe if we were to get this same posture, we would have peace in our soul too. Yes, Jesus is the Prince of Peace, but he has established for you to be the district manager over your peace department. You have to learn how to hire and fire accordingly. It's a whole nother sermon. (laughs) Whole nother sermon. Seven words. Seven words that reveals to us God's posture as he builds. And God saw that it was good. Changes everything. And God saw that it was good. 
Seven. I think this is like one of God's favorite numbers. Like if I were to just guess, I think God's favorite number is like either 7, 3, 12, or 40. It's just numbers I see all throughout the text. These seven words, and God saw that it was good. How can God look at something that's not finished and still call it good? How could God see something that's in a process and still call it good? Because it's God-like when you're able to see the good and unfinished stuff. So the question on the floor is, can you see the good in that which isn't finished? Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Can you see the good in things that are still in process? Can you see the good within yourself when you're still in process? Seven words, and God saw that it was good, but it was not finished. And we have to understand, we're talking about God. Jehovah, Adonai, Yahweh. We're talking about God. All God has to do is imagine it, think it, dwell on it. He could speak And say, let there be in everything we just read that it took six days to make, God could have did it all in six seconds. Why did God take his time? Church, I'm trying to get, I want us to get this because it changes everything. It shows us that God builds in phases. God builds in increments. And at each phase and each increment, he could see it's good. It's good. So here's the question, y'all. I believe there's somebody under the sound of my voice on tonight. I feel it. There's somebody under the sound of my voice. Your anxiety is going through the roof. Watching online, anxiety to where you're tossing and turning. You can't even sleep at night. Anxiety going through the roof. Mental scenario after mental scenario. Have you ever thought yourself mad? Maybe you're not having a bad day. You're entertaining bad thoughts, which gives you bad vibes, and you label that as a bad day. I'm talking to you. Creating mental scenario after mental scenario. I'm talking about frustrated. You're frustrated with where you are. You're frustrated with who you are. Frustrated in your singleness. Frustrated when you were dating somebody. Frustrated in your marriage. Frustrated now that you got divorced. Frustrated in this season. And you were also frustrated in the last season. Frustrated where God has you right now because you cannot see the good in any phase that God is building you because you don't know how to celebrate small milestones. Amen. Amen. I'm talking to somebody, y'all. You don't know how to rejoice in the Lord always. And then again, I say rejoice. You don't know how to celebrate your small successes. You haven't smoked in three weeks. Celebrate that, that God is changing you. You're so hard on yourself. And I feel it because I'm right here with you. You're so hard on yourself that you can't even celebrate the work of the Holy Spirit changing you. And other people can see it. And I can see it. And people on social media can see it. But you can't see it. You know why? Because you see nothing good in anything that's not finished. So you beat yourself up. Verbally abusive to you. Disappointed with God. Because I haven't learned how do I see the good in things that aren't finished. Like like the part of your brain that's supposed to be used for dreams and your imaginations and your innovation and creativity, that part of your brain is filled up with complaints. Filled with complaints. Like you're like, I want to be creative, but you're using all that energy just trying to survive. Just trying to survive what you went through. Just trying to act like you're okay, but you're not. Acting like it doesn't hurt is hard. Put it this way. Here's a basic quote you could write down. Acting hard is hard. (laughs) Acting hard is hard. And the more you act hard, the more it hardens your heart. The part of your brain that's supposed to be filled with biblical pursuits and biblical goals is filled with complaints. 
I'm going to give you a Bible. I know it's getting rough, but I want to give it to you. This is why I cried. See, y'all thought I was playing. I was crying while I was getting this. God, this hurts. God, and he's like, you're so hard on yourself. You're so, every time you preach a sermon, you're so hard on yourself. Was it good? That ain't even a concern, Jerry. Did they see me? That's all you need to be worried about. Did they see me? You don't know when, you, when you're finished preaching who prayed on the way home. You don't know who started to break up certain things because of a message that you were humble enough to preach. Stop worrying about your personality and your persona. Worry about was I seen and was I magnified and glorified. You prayed, God, let me be your PA system. A PA system, you don't see nobody. All you do is hear. All you do is hear. And so I'm right here with you, being transparent and vulnerable. I'm so hard on me. Just like you're so hard on yourself because you're not able to be like God. Sit back and look at something on day three and say it's good. God, but I had abortions. God, I used to sell drugs, but did you do that today? My blood covers our mission of sins so that when I see you, all I see is my son. All I see is my son. I'm going to give you Bible, 2 Peter chapter 1. This is for somebody who feels as though I don't have enough. And if I had more, then I'll be better. I'll be further down the line if I had more. Um, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, His divine power has given us some things. Somebody said no, so correct me. His divine power has given us some things. His divine power has given us a few things. His divine power has given us everything we need for godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and his goodness. And God said that it was good. He called us by his own glory and goodness. So look at this, y'all. When you don't know how to applaud your small successes, when you don't know how to rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice, when you don't know how to view God as good even when life isn't, it activates complaining and projecting. And so you constantly keep saying stuff like, man, I thought I'd be further down the line by now. I thought my life would look totally different. Y'all not talking to me. Am I talking to anybody? I thought my life would be totally different by now. I thought I'd be married by now. I thought my career would look like this by now. And then you start projecting. Don't they see how hard I'm working? Why don't they help me? They don't see how hard I'm. Why didn't she share my stuff on her social media? She shared everybody else, but she don't share my stuff. So now because I'm discontent, here it is. Because I'm discontent with the process of God, I will start to question people that God legitimately sent in your life to be an assistant to your evolution. Because look, just like Satan sends people, God sends people too. And the enemy always tries to get us to start feeling some type of way towards the people that will help you get to another level. And so I'll end up sabotaging a God connection. See, we have so many sermons warning you to look out for counterfeits. But do you know how to identify God sense? Do you know how to identify people who level you up? Do you know how to identify people who hold you accountable? Do you know how to identify people who make you bear fruit? Do you know how to, how to identify people who will pray with you? When you call them gossiping, they'll say, no, girl, we hit them on three-way. I'll get all of y'all on the line. We all going to talk about this. So just maybe... Maybe the reason you keep dating the people that you're dating is because your type has become construction workers instead of purpose partners. Because <laughs> you don't see the good in anything that's not finished. So I'm dating you to hopefully you can fix my loneliness. Construction workers. Ooh, this might hurt. If we be honest, our last four exes were construction workers. <laughs> Ease up. I'm going to put my foot on the gas some more. I'm going to date them because maybe they'll fix my lust. I'm going to date them. Maybe they'll fix my abandonment. And so we're trying to get flawed people to fix what the Holy Spirit is trying to fix each and every day in our life. 
But the reason we won't submit to the Holy Spirit's fixing is because we don't know how to see the good in things that are unfinished. I know I'm being obedient on tonight, y'all. Y'all should see y'all faces. So let me lighten the mood real quick, okay? So uh, my wife can cook. Is there anybody here that can cook? Now, don't lie. Okay, so let me break this down. All right. Um, when I say cook, I mean like at Thanksgiving in a few weeks, if you don't bring that dish, somebody going to feel some type of way. I'm talking about that type of cooking where if you don't cook, somebody gets offended. Like one of my church mothers, Miss Celestine, if she, if she cooks something and she doesn't give it to me, we got problems. <laughs> we got beef. I'm talking about that type of cook. Not just add water and push 30 seconds. I'm talking about like cook, cook. Well, Miss Flowers can cook, cook, and that's something I pray for. For real, I pray God let her be holy and let her know how to throw down in the kitchen. And he answered my prayers. So one day, there's this dish that she cooks I really like. It's like this oven-baked salmon and this kale and beets like mix and it's, it's just everything and so I'm hungry right men are so interesting like we hungry but we don't help <laughs> so I'm hungry and she's taking her time making this dish and so I, I'm looking at her and I try to do like things to kind of like you know you got to be careful because women are interesting like they could be wrong and if you get mad that they were wrong they'll get mad at you back like, why are you mad? But when you're not wrong, you just got to be careful. So I'm kind of like trying to give clues that I'm hungry. Like, man, I sure am hungry. She's, I, I, I'm making it, baby. And then her mama called on FaceTime. Now, I love mama, but it's just, mama, at that moment, you were slowing down the process of my wife cooking. And so she just sitting there, yeah, mama, yeah, well, Melly's doing just fine. She's doing just fine. Yeah. And I'm sitting there now, I'm kind of mad. I don't know why I didn't think just help her, but I'm kind of mad. And so uh, then she puts the fish in the oven. And so she sets it, I think it was like 30 minutes. I don't remember how long she said it. But our oven makes this sound when it's done. It goes like this. <whistles> so when I hear that, I'm like, good, I'm about to eat. She says, hold on, Jerry. She looks, and she starts looking in the middle, and she says, no, it's not done yet. And I said, but the timer was set. She said, it's not done yet. Look in the middle. See, sometimes when we think we're done, God is like, hold on, look, you're still lustful in the middle. You're still entitled in the middle. Yeah, I, I can't have you pray for them yet because you'll be praying on them. You see, this is still in the middle. I wonder how many of us are prolonging a season because we keep prematurely opening doors. Mm -hmm. I'm looking. And y'all, this, this, I got so upset that I started to eat a bowl of cereal. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> Only God can judge me, right? So I'm eating a bowl of cereal. I'm still kind of irritated. Now, I like this cereal, but it's not what I wanted. Here it is. I wonder how many of us are consuming what we really don't want because we're not patient enough to wait for what we really do want. So God is really preparing you for something, but you don't like the way God bakes. You don't like the way God molds. You See, I would have been irritated because God kind of was cooking like, Tanisha was kind of cooking like how God did. There's a, there's a fish. And here's the thing about me. She likes to thaw the fish. And thawing, it means leaving it in the sink all day. I'm like, just run some hot water on it. Run some hot water on it. She's like, no, but get out the kitchen, sir. And a lot of us, we want God to expedite the process. Watch this, because of your appetite. Who in the sanctuary and who is watching online is settling for cereal? Because I don't have the patience to trust God's timing. I want to speak around this thought for just a few more moments. I'm under construction. Can I get us to say this? I know it's rough. It was rough for me. Can I get us to, just to say this? And everybody watching online, can I get you to put this in the room? Father, open my eyes to see the good in the not yet. One more time. Father. Open my eyes to see the good 
and not yet. yet. I'm under construction. I'm under construction. I'm under construction. Whatever wall you have to tear down, God do it. I'm under construction. I'm under construction. Whatever prideful wall that you need to tear down, tear it down. Be a wrecking ball. I'm under construction. I'm under construction. I don't care what people think right now because I'm in a place where my life, I keep building wrong things and I don't want to build anything wrong anymore. So God, would you build in me a pillar of faithfulness and build in me a pillar of holiness and build in me a pillar of righteousness and build in me a pillar of discernment. I'm tired of having my plans wrecked because I keep building when you keep wanting me to wait. And I keep sleeping with bowls of cereal and dating bowls of cereal and ooh we marrying bowls of cereal. And I want to get to the place where God, what you pick is what I pick, but I need you to work on my patience. I need you to work on my patience. The power of this text that messed me up I'm going to just be transparent, vulnerable, and nude. I believe we need more nudity in the pulpit. We need more transparency in the pulpit where we can be touched. The power in this text, and if I could just be honest, Jerry doesn't always see the good and stuff that's not finished. Y'all look great and holy, and that's fine. I'm just talking about me right now. I don't always see the good. And stuff that's not finished. And I know God has called me to be a leader, but sometimes it is frustrating when you feel like you keep having incomplete projects. And my posture is supposed to be to rejoice in the Lord always. And then again, I say rejoice. So now, this is why many of us, we cannot celebrate our milestones because it's constantly eclipsed by what you've done or what you should be doing. What I've done or what I should be doing. Can we talk on the night? Can we talk on the night? So now I'm in a state of where I keep on picking wrong people and wrong picks create cycles and cycles cause you to waste time. And I've just arrived to this place where wasting time is a form of disrespect. And here it is, some of us are disrespecting ourselves by wasting our own time. There's somebody right now, I'm not talking about a married couple, we're going to deal with that later. There's somebody right now, you're wasting time because you're with somebody and you know that the Holy Spirit has not endorsed this, but you don't want to start over. I invest too much. That there's too much. I've, I've done too much. I've invested in too much. And you don't want to start over, but it's unhealthy. Your hair falling out. You got bags, like how you got bags under your eyes and you just 31? You stressed? I'm talking to somebody. High blood pressure, your chest is tight, you constantly have migraines, this is unhealthy. But I don't want to, I don't want to invest in the time of of starting over. But here's the thing. You cannot make somebody be God's will who never was his will. I know it's rough, y'all, but y'all said I can't wait to come in season. You cannot, like, I can't make somebody value more what they already don't appreciate. You can't make somebody become God's will. So I pray hard, Lord, please and please. You can't make, (laughs) you can't make something that is not God's will become God's will. And I just want to encourage somebody again, you're not crazy. You're not crazy, nor are you selfish because you want the same kingdom love that you extend. You want it back to yourself. You're not crazy. You keep getting hurt because you expect you from people. And this is the reason why you keep on getting hurt. You're not asking for too much. You're just asking the wrong one. You're just asking the wrong one. Now, listen, wrong people will really think, really have you out here thinking that you're asking for too much. And the reason that is, is because they can't offer much. So they switch it back around on you. You asking for too much. No, you can't offer much. And so now you're you're questioning yourself because you're trying to make somebody who has a drain quality become a fountain. And the reason I'm preaching this series so passionately is because I want us to understand 
that God wants you to start to see things through his lens. So when love knocks on the door of your heart, fear won't cause for you to act like you're not home. I said, okay, God, this is rough. How, how, how do I get to a place to see the good? He said, it's simple, Jay. Gratitude. It's simple. Let me give you Bible. Me, Psalms chapter 7, verse 17. This is rough, y'all. Y'all should see y'all face. Psalms chapter 7, verse 17. It says, I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. I will sing the praises of the name of the Lord most high. Psalms chapter 9, verse 1. It says, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. Psalms 95, verse 1. It says, come let us sing. For the joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud. This is why I feel you. This is why I understand sometimes when we're up here singing songs, you got the lyrics before you. Some of us just sit like this. I'm like, bro, saying thank you is just good manners. Anybody else is raised like that? Saying thank you is just good manners. I wish that we could take a trip over to like Korea and see our brothers and sisters in hidden jungles with torn pages of the Bible who are willing to die for their faith. They don't know the lyrics. They don't sound in key or anything, but they're singing because the only thing they know they have is God. Amen. We have AC. We have cushioned seats. We have parking spots. We have internet. We have several outfits. They have torn pages of the scriptures and are on fire for God. And when we lose fire in the pulpit, preach Holy Ghost, when we lose fire in our preaching, then it will start to bleed over to us not having fire in the pews. And when we don't have fire in the pews, we won't have fire in our schools and fire in our marriages. We have to have fire back in our preaching. This is why I preach so hard. This is why I sweat outside of my clothes. Because I'm filled with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And it's my job. It's my job to preach the undiluted truth of the gospel, gratitude. Number one, gratitude is the parent of all postures. Gratitude is the parent of all postures. It raises things. You want your joy to be raised? Have gratitude. You want your peace to be raised? Have gratitude. You want your mood to shift? Have gratitude. Maybe the reason you're so upset is because the way you think. But if I can get you to thank, maybe that will affect the way you think. If I can begin to thank him for what he's done. Somebody may be irritated right now. You want me to hurry up and finish the sermon. But if you can say, you know what, there was a time I didn't care about the gospel. I used to fall asleep and now this sweaty man has my attention. God, I thank you that my mind is awoken to the gospel. God, I thank you. I may not have as much money as I want to, but you know when I leave here, I can pull over and sign I can get a slushie. God, I thank you. The way you think will dictate the way you think. Gratitude is the parent Of all postures, it raises things. Number two, gratitude removes the belief of not enough. When you constantly have a heart of gratitude, you don't feel like you don't have enough. Because I'm grateful for what I have. Number three, gratitude is patience workout plan. If you ever want to increase your patience, start being grateful For everything you have. Somebody say gratitude. Gratitude Gratitude removes the debris of disappointment. I was talking about this in the discernment series. The reason a lot of us keep on making the wrong picks is because we're not grateful for our singleness. We're not. And there's some married people who are saying, listen, I wish I was like you again. Single people who can't wait to be married and married people who wish they were single again. Maybe we need to do a sermon called Before I Do, After I Did. (laughs) Gratitude is patience, work our plan. Gratitude removes the debris of disappointment. And number five, gratitude magnifies the have. It magnifies the have. So you're able to look at a face in your life, and instead of you being discouraged with where you are, You're able to magnify what you have. Somebody say gratitude. Gratitude Gratitude is when we have the ability to know who's building. So I want want to show you this and I'm done. I feel like this is as much as you guys could take. Gratitude is when 
I'm just appreciative for this. I want to move this where you see it. Gratitude, I'm just appreciative for this. I'm just appreciative that I could pray. Amen. That's, I, just, I don't have to sacrifice no bulls and goats. I couldn't live in the Old Testament. Could you imagine what you had to do when you sinned? You had to get like a bull and a goat. I'm thinking the bull ain't like, all right, go ahead, slice my throat. I'm thinking you got to chase it. You got to run. It's probably kicking and knocking. You got to do all that. I got to take it to the priest. See, back then, like your bull and your goat, that was like your car. Just imagine every time you sin, you got to give your car up. <laughs> like, I thank God that the veil has been torn and I can go before God. I'm thankful for this. Can I get somebody to say this? Y'all know what it is, but I'm thankful for this. So maybe what God is trying to do is get us in a place where we trust when he's building. We could trust what he's building. I don't know what God has planned, but I trust the person who's building. So I think many times we don't understand God is trying to give us a solid foundation. I want your foundation to be solid. I want your belief to be solid. And God's the type of God, at this part right here, he says, that's good. That's good. I'm proud of that. Even though you don't know what it is yet, that's good. See, and here's a dangerous thing when we don't read the manual. That's your Bible. See, I know how to put this together because I studied, right? But you don't know how to put this together because you haven't seen the manual. When you don't read your Bible, you end up making up foundations. So I'm like, hey, y'all, look at work. Look like a dresser to me. Look like a shelf to me. So I'm making my own foundation because the only time you open your Bible is on Thursday. The only time you open your Bible is when Jerry says, turn to Scripture so-and-so. But here's the problem. When God gives you a good thing, or if you ever try to do life with somebody, you can't even handle the blessing because you haven't spent time with building the foundation. Amen. I got all these blessings I'm ready to give you, but you couldn't even handle one because you don't know how to seek my face and say, okay, God, build my foundation. All right, first thing we're going to have to do, we're going to have to get rid of the secular music. You keep on saying, God, help me stop cursing. But all the music you listen to keep cursing everybody out. So you actually have a subscription fee for music that curse you out. And then you wonder why every time you get mad, you curse somebody out. So let, let's change our playlist. It's not legalism. It's to help you detox from a language that's not kingdom. Because I don't have enough control. So God's okay. Do that. Somebody say, that's good. That's good. Now, here's the thing that I want us to stop doing. Because it's at this phase, technically, that one didn't fold. That one didn't fall. That one didn't fall either. But you're settling. You're settling because I want to take you higher. Somebody, you're going to get it. You're never going you're never gonna to look at a bookshelf the same again. You're like, I want to take you higher. So I, I don't want you to settle for that. Will you trust me as I deal with your childhood trauma? Because that's affecting your personality. Trust me with that. All right. Will you trust me and give me, you only got a few days left in this year. Give me your morning. Stop giving Facebook your morning. Give it to me. Give me your morning. Will you trust me, boo-boo? This man is not for you. This, this, this woman, she's not for you. Stop selling for cereal when I have for you a, a meal that I'm preparing for you. Just trust me. I'm trying to build in you faith, and I'm trying to build in you character, and I'm trying to build in you righteousness. I'm trying to build all these things on the inside of you. But in the process of this, you can't post this part, y'all. You know why? Because it's not done. I can't post this part. It's not finished. It's like, okay, but if you just trust me and allow me to keep building you, you were tripping 
over what you lost at that level, but you don't even know. I'm trying to take you to another level. I'm trying to take you higher, and you were content at that one phase, but now you're ready for another phase. And God's able to look at that and say, it's good. What I want us to see is God is constantly building us. But are you able to see the good at every phase? At every phase. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, whatever you're struggling with, are you able to appreciate when things don't work out? Are you able to trust God when he says, God really has three answers, y'all. It's yes, no, and I have better. Y'all gonna say wait. But the wait is because I have better. God doesn't make you wait if he doesn't have better for you. I have better. Some of us are crying over things that we couldn't imagine losing. But God's like, I'm about to give you something that you couldn't imagine having. But I want you to trust the process of me building you from first level to second level so that now I could put more on you and I could take you higher. And as I was showing Tanisha this, I said, do you think this is good? She said, yeah. And I said, what about it being a little wobbly? And she was like, you know what? You're always gonna have parts in your life that God's trying to fix. So even though you're not there, see, this is why some of us haven't started your YouTube channel because you don't think you're worthy. You haven't started your podcast. You haven't started your book because you still have some wobbly areas. God is going to keep on working on you. He's going to keep on building you. But are you able, when we were at the bottom, to look at it and say, it's good? Are you the individual that you only will say it's good when it's here? Yeah, you're kind of leaning with it and rocking with it. But my grace is sufficient in all the areas of your life that you don't have together. If you allow me to keep working and allow me to keep building, if you truly submit to me and allow me to be your construction worker, everything in your life that you are about to settle for at level two, everything that you thought wouldn't happen at level three, and the places that you couldn't dream about going at level four, I'm going to do if you learn how to appreciate level one. Is this good, y'all? I want us to stand and pray. Let's stand and pray. Powerful word. What a powerful word. Listen, we're so glad that you decided to join us. I pray that this message really blessed your life, gave you insight, gave you clarity, just gave you some help to be just the best that God wants you to be. I hope you will continue to watch this Cuffing Season series because it's really going to be amazing. So if this is your first time joining us, once again, thank you. And if you're saying, I want to be a part of this ministry, we want you to text the word membership to the number listed on the screen. And we would love to have you be a part of our body. And if you're saying, I've never even heard a message like this before. I'm under construction, but I don't. I want, to be, I want to be given over to the construction of God. Like, I want Him to construct my life. I want to give everything over to Him. If you want to say, I want to be saved, best decision you'll ever make, go ahead and text the word Fresh Start to the same number. And if you've been giving to our ministry week after week, we're so appreciative. We're so thankful. Thank you so much. You're sowing into good ground. All of our giving information is also listed on the screen. We love you all. We pray for you all. We thank you all for tuning in week after week. We pray that your lives are enriched and blessed. So until Sunday, have a great night.